Well, today on the bench we have some Garmin tracking collars. These belong to a friend at work that uses them to track his dogs when he's hunting. We have two different ones with two different problems. Uh, this is the one that doesn't charge. And I do see some corrosion here on the contacts, but it, it may be more than that. We can definitely clean that up. We'll take a look inside. I've taken uh, both screws off the back plate, taken the collar off. I've taken the antenna off. I do have to take the actual GPS antenna off. Goes the connector for the GPS antenna. Lay this aside, not to get confused with this one at the moment. I have taken four screws out here for time. And this it needs to be cleaned up. Let's open it up and see what we got here. First peek inside. And I do see those battery wires are pretty flat, but I think they were against that foam. Probably got continuity we can check for that. And right off, we do see some bad corrosion. That's not good. Let's see if we can get some close up of that. See a lot of corrosion here. Worried about a lot of corrosion around that chip there. I'm gonna clean it up. Looks like some moisture got in. Started attacking the circuit board at some point. Later I'll clean it up with alcohol and see if it looks any better. And while I'm back using this vinegar, I definitely don't want to miss getting those contacts right there. To, it should clean those up a lot better than they were. So we'll take a look. After cleaning up this circuit board, we'll look at these traces and these components. A lot of that corrosion did clean up okay. But I think the traces did survive but the corrosion was getting really bad on those. Corrosion looks a lot better. We 
go to the other end and look around the push button. I think the power on off button side probably had the worst, worst corrosion. And what I thought were little ceramic caps, that might be an LED. Get the battery out and take a look at it. So for now, not sure about the battery and how it's working. I'm going to set it aside. And I'm going to look into the second one. We do have some light corrosion on this one to clean up, but it's not nearly as bad is the other one. There's even some corrosion on the pins. We'll take a closer look at it. Getting corrosion here. Not bad yet, but starting, so we'll clean that up. So after cleaning the board up, we'll give it a closer look. So this is the version three board. It does look a lot better than it did. A lot of the corrosion did wipe up. Well, how about that? That chip blank. I didn't pay that attention. Um, get the other one in here same spot that one has that chip in place we have the blank spot so this is actually the Garmin this is version 5 and that's version 3 so there's a little bit of difference in this area right here but don't look too bad now one thing I did realize the unit it cleaned up well I thought this one had the actual good battery I could not get a reading off the red and the black off of the battery on this one that I, I never have taken out of the housing but the battery that I took apart to see how it was constructed when I measure from the uh, the black and the red, as you would assume would be the battery terminals. You can see this on camera or not, but I'm getting my 3.9 volts. This one does not. And I have these little fine tip points. I can feel it getting on the metal. But nothing, not even, not even millivolts really. So either this battery is bad or the actual protection circuit, BMS little circuit built in, is bad. So with the battery pack replaced, 
and the board cleaned up ready to test. I do have the RF antenna and the GPS antenna hooked up. We'll test it out. So we know it's powered on and blinking. We'll see if uh, I am in the garage, but we'll see if the GPS antenna I pick up and see if we'll go to double blinking. There we go, it's been a, a couple minutes and it has received the GPS signal. So now it's actually blinking, uh, the double blink and tracking. That is actually successfully working cleaning up corrosion. It also had a bad contact for the GPS, so it actually wouldn't connect. But after getting that center connection sticking back up like it's supposed to be, it's connected and the GPS is now connected with the, with the double blink. Using the same repair pack to hook up to it for testing. So I did get some parts in for these Garmin collars. In troubleshooting on the last collar, we was able to clean corrosion and get the collar working. This one also had corrosion, but it had a few more issues, or maybe just the corrosion was that bad. I got my new microscope here and you can see it a little bit better. On this one here, we, trouble, we was troubleshooting down to the switch. And we had our voltage across our switch, but we, um, we wasn't getting it to our transistor to cut on. There is, there is still a lot of corrosion here we can repair, but it goes beyond the corrosion. The switch itself has failed. So, one of the easiest ways to jump across this switch is just with tweezers. And we see that we're getting our light but it's only on one end. You can see that on the microscope. Um, this collar here, we know the switch is faulty, but we also, the corrosion has probably gotten into these LEDs here as well. And we have a, a red and then a blue LED. So it should be the red one blinking on each side and the reason I know the blue one is faulty is because I, I did try to charge it and I get a voltage on the blue LED, but it actually doesn't come on. So I have a voltage there, just like here, if you can see the meter. <clears throat> if I get on this LED. But if you can see the bar graph before you can see the, uh, the digits, we see our pulse showing up on the meter about the same time as our left LEDs blinking. So like our previously tested collar, these two should be blinking together. So I think corrosion has gotten so bad that it's actually gotten into the LEDs and it's uh, the, the switch is deteriorated, which the connection needs to be cleaned up really good anyway. And the best way to do that is gonna be to remove it and put flux and clean it up. So we're going to try to do this with the hot air tool and see if we can get the switch and these two LEDs off and uh, see if we have luck replacing them. So this is the switch I picked out to try to replace this one. I don't think they make a switch just like the switch on this version 5 any longer. This switch here is very similar to the to the version three switch, uh, the version three board, I am gonna have to break the little plastic tabs off the bottom. But the way the uh, the metal frame solders on the board for to hold it in place, and just for rigidity, um, and the way the the contact points on the back line up, very very close. So. We'll see if we have any luck with it.
So I tried just using hot air and to, uh, to get the switch with this much metal contact point, to get the switch up the temperature. It actually was starting to melt the plastic parts, which this is the old switch, but still, I want to try to hit it from both angles here. Swap it around. Just a little bit of solder to that spot there. Transfer the heat a little better. One pad there pulled off. Lucky it was only one so far. Rest of the pads look pretty good. That's where they had glued it down at the factory. It looks like a little glue dot. We're going to glue the switch down.
have switched over to my finer tip. Got a real fine wire jumper to replace that trace. Turn this a little bit. Turn the whole thing. These are 603 package uh, surface mount LEDs. They're actually so small that um, if you drop them, it's, it'd be, it's like a grain of sand almost. It'd be hard to find them. I'm going to go to diode check mode. I know that the way they orient on this board, 
is red then blue and positive should be on the outside based on the check we did earlier. Like that. So there's our red. There's our blue and the orientation is correct. If I can just transfer to the board just like that, we'll be good. Tell that's stuck or not. Looks like it's stuck enough to maybe get the other side. I cannot solder well left-handed. Well, not something this small anyway. how close they were together. That's not going to work. to get in there. Not quite. Not pretty. Put it on diode check mode. And just check these. Yeah, positive was outside. Check these and make sure everything's still working. Yep, red, blue. Yay! Not pretty. But that's, uh, that's really the smallest components I've ever dealt with. And, uh, Really found my limitation with my tools. The hot air didn't work like I thought it would, especially on the switch. And that's the finest tweezers I have. And I was fixing to go take a, a stone it in. I, did, I just could not get it in between. I ended up just having to put it a little closer together, which the best I could do. Get 
get a better look at the switch. I need to hit that solder joint and switch a little bit better. From that angle, I can see it. Give it a try. Hey, the push button works. Both, both the LEDs work now. I'll have to, uh, I have to get the uh, charger and make sure that the blue LED works. I already had the charger and the housing and the, the collar where I'd taken it apart on my my other workbench in the garage so I have the repair board out here where I got the switch on repaired I actually had the um, the LEDs replaced the red and the blue so we've already tested the two reds where the, the one red was already working of course we tested our red we put on and now the hook the charger up See the blue one comes on and there we go, if you can see that. We got our blue. So everything checks out good. I'm gonna put it together and we'll test it out. So if you learned something today about working on these Garmin DC30 collars, please like, share, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.